All right, today's the big day. We're finally gonna build this ceiling. Or the roof, I guess. I always call roof ceilings. Now guys, before we start, we need to talk about something. Some guy in the last video recommended that I try out a... a gentle slop. I, I assume he meant slope, like a sloped flat roof. So I tried doing that in a creative world and unfortunately it looked like crap. But I figured out a design for myself that I like better. So in today's episode, we're going to be gathering the resources we need so that uh, I can get the birds to stop shitting on my upstairs carpet. So today's topic of discussion is trying to impress people. I realize the past few videos I've uploaded have all had pretty harsh negative tones. So today I thought, since I have to do a boring old mining trip, I'd tell you all a more lighthearted story that I was thinking about recently that led me to a pretty interesting epiphany. So once upon a time, in a magical faraway land known as Leon, West Virginia. Me and my friends were hanging out in the woods. We had a mutual friend who lived on a property there that just had acres and acres of forest nearby. So we'd all go out there sometimes to just do whatever. On one such occasion, we were hanging out near this abandoned church in the middle of the forest. And it would be on this night that Charles would make a decision that he would come to sorely regret. That night, we had all gone to the liquor store, and one of us purchased a large plastic bottle of the most bargain bin, bottom shelf vodka you could buy. I believe it was called Boston Vodka. We had spent the evening setting up a little campfire next to this abandoned church in the middle of the woods from like the late 1800s, where we could all sit around the fire, get drunk, and just chill out. But Charles had different plans. You see, Charles had devised the most devious plot of which he was certain would achieve nothing more than the complete admiration and adoration of his peers. A feat that would go on through the annals of party history as one of the great moments of fun having. He decided he was going to chug as much vodka straight out of the bottle as he possibly could. So, when everyone was done setting up the fire and we were all sitting around, I went, hey everyone, check this out! and then proceeded to do the unthinkable. Everyone stared in stunned silence as I made it through a, let's call it a significant portion of the bottle, before tearing the bottle away from my mouth and wiping the vodka off my lips in victory, as one of my dear friends broke his no doubt amazed silence to reveal to me words that my actions had pressed against his soul. He spoke to me in plain, monotonous English. Dude, you are gonna be really sick. <laughs> and the moment he said that, I just started vomiting violently everywhere. I got so sick so immediately that I was on the ground crying within seconds. My friends had to wrap me up in a sleeping bag, stick me in the back of the truck as I slowly vomited all the alcohol out, all while crying out and going, I'm sorry, I didn't want this. Ah. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I bet. They were impressed. So, <laughs> here's the thing. I was thinking about that story recently, and I realized that it actually makes a great analogy for what the problem with being a people pleaser is. So, I'm going to present this as a philosophical dilemma that I have affectionately titled The Vodka Dilemma. So, it goes like this. I feel that I need to impress my friends. So, I decide to drink vodka straight out of the bottle. At this point, one of two things can happen. Either I succeed in impressing my friends, or I fail. If I fail, then not only have I poisoned myself, but I've also done the exact opposite of what I felt that I needed to do, which in turn makes me insecure, requiring that I do even more to impress my friends in the future. If I succeed, hooray! They're excited, they're having fun, and... I have now become the guy who has to give himself alcohol poisoning to impress his friends. Which only temporarily cures my insecurity, but requires me to impress my friends once again in the future, likely in more and more dangerous ways, which actually deepens my insecurity, as now I have to do even more than the last time to be liked. So the dilemma is, at what point in this process was I poisoned? And the answer is, every single step of this entire process is a unique form of the exact same poison. Which is the idea that I am not enough. Allow me to elaborate. The first thing that I said was that I need to impress my friends. But, I was not actually aware of the fact that I felt that way, I just took the feeling at face value as truth. And the truth is that the reason I feel that I need that is because I feel insecure in who I am, 
either in general or around this group of friends, and I am acting not out of a genuine sense of wanting to have fun, but out of fear that if I don't do something extreme, no one will like me. Therefore, you can deduce that from my perspective, there is an unlikableness about me that is just fundamental. That's just who I am. I'm unlikable. And in order to fix that, the solution is to make myself likable. And to do that, I'm going to impress these random people with an act of poisoning myself. The next poison that I drank was the literal poison of alcohol. But why that? Why do I think that's going to be something that impresses people? Well, the answer is, because I believe that I'm this unworthy creature, then whatever perspective anyone else has doesn't matter, because even if they did like me, in my mind, they're wrong. Because my beliefs are far more fundamental to me than their beliefs. It's kind of a confusing statement, I know, but what I'm saying is, if I believe it, it is my reality. So it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, I can just assume that that's what they would think, or what, in my opinion, they should think. So because in my mind, we might as well be all in agreement that I'm this horrible creature, it will be incredibly entertaining for them to watch me destroy myself. Because after all, what is there to do with an unsightly and worthless creature but to destroy it? And so I will take this poison, which is sure to harm me, so as to satisfy our mutual feeling that I deserve to be harmed. And then we can laugh. Laugh at my pain. Laugh at the horrible pained creature. Ah ha ha. Now, I'm not saying every single person that does something stupid at a party is doing it for this reason. I'm just saying that, like, if you decide to do something like this that's risky and self-harming out of a sense of insecurity, this is the logic of that mindset. Because you have to think, if you're worthless, why are you even there? Why was I invited to this party if I'm fundamentally unlikable? Well, my brain tells me, it must be because there's something entertaining about me. I don't know. So I will take on this mantle of entertainer at the expense of the only person who deserves to take the expenditure, which is myself, the worthless creature. So everyone gather round and watch the thing you must certainly despise be made a fool of and laugh at its pain. And why? Because that comforts me. Then the final poison comes in the fork between the consequences of my actions. If I had been encouraged in my behavior, then I would have had my sentiment that who I am is worthless actually reinforced thus strengthening that identity and ensuring that I will continue to self-harm further as a form of entertainment and that I will continue to use that friend group to do so since they are giving me this thing that I'm convinced that I need, which is validation. If instead, as was the case, my behavior is not celebrated, then no matter the nature of that lack of celebration, I will be disappointed that my endeavors did not inspire positive emotions amongst everyone. However, this does not actually punish the insecure identity, but rather also encourages it. Remember, I started this whole thing out thinking I'm unlikable. Then I did something extremely unlikable, so I'm still unlikable. And that's the only thought that I have, because if I was capable about introspecting about this situation, I wouldn't have gotten into it in the first place. So you see, no matter what happens, I actually end this whole process the same way that I started which is insecure and feeling like I need to impress people. Now, if you do this, or you've ever done this, you might think to yourself, oh, that's so humiliating. Oh, jeez, I hate that I do this, and I hate that I'm being called out and seen. But let me just be real with you for a second. This is fucking genius. Do you realize how genius this is? I mean, yes, it is a process that is designed entirely to destroy you, so it doesn't feel good, but that doesn't mean it isn't incredibly smart and kind of flawless in its design. Look, at some point in my life, I was insecure, and I didn't know how to deal with that because no one taught me. So I did what everyone who becomes a people pleaser does. I invented, all on my own, a system of living life that creates a perfect closed loop that ensures that my identity never has to be challenged so that I don't have to deal with that on top of being insecure. Which, if you're like a little kid, is really, really important. Because you're not very big, and you don't know a lot. So you need some way of surviving the hell of having insecure attachments with people in your life. So what do you do? You create a perfect thought loop. That's what traumatized children do. They use that incredible tool that children have, their wild imaginations, to conceptualize thought loops that keep them safe from information they don't know how to process. And that helps them survive. 
And then later they end up losing their imagination because they don't like it anymore. Because of how hard it screwed them over in creating this lifestyle that they have to deal with now that sucks. So really, if you've ever done this in your life, take a moment not to judge yourself for it. But like, laugh about it, man. Because you are a little evil genius for figuring this out. Yeah, it wasn't good for you and maybe you're still doing it. I know I am. But I don't know, man. I think you kind of deserve a pat on the back. Don't be so humiliated by the things you did when life was hard to keep yourself going. Because you were just looking out for yourself, man. The truth is, the persons, with a parenthetical S, that were supposed to prevent you from having to do this failed their responsibilities. So you made up for it. And you couldn't have done that properly your first go, because, like, you might have been six, or 12, or 16. And, like, would you really expect a 16-year-old to have the wisdom to raise a child? Would you expect a 12-year-old or a 6-year-old to have the wisdom to raise a child? By all accounts, it should have been a complete disaster. But you're not. Because you survived. You've made it this far because you're smart. When you don't know what to do, you figure out how to do it. And you don't make the perfect system the first time because who does? But you make a system that works. And like, that's kind of amazing because you were a kid that didn't know anything. Look at this thing, man. It's a perfect logic loop. It is designed to keep your identity totally intact so that you don't go completely crazy. But of course, it's not actually good for you. And you know that. But I think part of the reason you can't move on from that is because you don't see how cool it is that you did this. See, you don't need to impress anyone because this is the shit that you pull and it's fucking impressive. Doing something like this genuinely takes a lot of empathy and intelligence. So you've got it, man. And this is a great example of that, even if it's not a good way to live. So if you want to move on and change the way that you see yourself in the world, stop demonizing your coping mechanisms. They kept you alive. And you figured them out because that's what you're capable of. That's a sign of your competence. See, most of us think that the amazing things people can do are limited only to the positives. I'm only a good person if I'm really good at something that helps me and everyone else. But what's amazing about you is not how you make the world better. It's the degree of power that you hold within yourself just by default, before you even decide what to do with it. And that's something that is always there. It can grow, but you can't get rid of it. And the limitations of that are practically infinite. And it's okay to feel guilty and remorseful about hurting people, but only if it's also just as valid to be guilty and remorseful about hurting yourself by calling yourself an idiot and thinking so little of yourself when you're doing something amazing. Instead of thinking, oh man, I'm such an idiot for hurting myself like this, you should think, wow, look at how capable I am at destroying myself. Imagine what I could do if I put that same energy into making my life better. I could really pull it off. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. Maybe instead of going to a campfire with my friends and drinking myself into a crying, vomiting mess wrapped up in a sleeping bag in the back of a truck begging forgiveness from my friends, I could use the exact same ideas, the exact same brain power, and the exact same muscles into going to a campfire with my friends and just enjoying myself. Being totally cool with who I am. Totally cool with everybody else. Just having a nice, memorable time with friends. It really is the same muscle that gets you there. Watch. Instead of assuming that I am unlikable, I am instead going to assume that who I am is okay. So let's run the dilemma. I think who I am is just fine. So I go to a campfire with friends. As I'm hanging out, enjoying my own company just as much as I'm enjoying everyone else's, I decide to tell a story about something that happened to me that I found very amusing. If it goes well, everyone is interested in my story and reacts in a positive and reinforcing manner, which encourages me to share myself with people more in the future, which is healthy and good. If it doesn't go well, everyone is disinterested in my story. Maybe I get interrupted and the conversation moves on. Maybe they just seem bored the whole time. Maybe they even outwardly call me out for telling a crap story. But... Because I'm okay with myself, I have the wherewithal to react in a positive and pro-social way. If I get interrupted, I just let go of that story. And maybe think later about how to tell a story that won't get me interrupted in the future. If everyone seems bored, I can check in and be like, hang on, am I literally boring the crap out of everyone right now? And I'm open to the response. If they call me out for telling a crap story, I can just laugh at myself. 
even being the totally okay, good person that I am, I'm still terrible at telling stories sometimes. Isn't it so fun to have flaws? Well, it is when you like yourself. And what you'll find is that when you have this attitude, people really warm up to you and love having you around because you can turn any situation into a positive one. Not because you're a positive person or because you avoid negative things and certainly not because of you showing off to everyone. You're still allowed to be angry and sad and afraid and all that and you're allowed to show it. You're just so confident in yourself that everything, even the bad feelings, just kind of feel cool to you and to everybody else because you feel competent and self-assured that you can handle anything. Thus, in the end of this situation, you end up encouraging yourself anyways, because even the negative results of you sharing yourself ended up positive, because you made it that way. And so the solution to the vodka dilemma is by using the exact same tool that you use to get yourself into the vodka dilemma, which is your self-perception. You need to make a decision, just like you decided a long time ago that who you were wasn't enough, that who you are is fine exactly the way it is. And what's gonna happen is, it's gonna be really hard and you're not gonna wanna do it. That's okay. That's just the previous you screaming at you because it doesn't wanna die. It's also a sign that you're not a narcissist, which, you know, if you were, this would be terrible advice. So narcissists ignore this advice. This is sort of what you're doing when you change your perspective. You're sort of killing an older version of you. So if it helps to think of it that way, by all means, go ahead. But the truth is, you're not really killing it because habits don't really go away. You're just building up another habit so strong that it's much easier to fall back on that than the old one. And the way you do that, initially, is consistently choosing to do something that your mind is going to try its absolute best to get you not to do. Do not hate yourself for that. Remember, it was your mind cleverly bullshitting you that actually saved your life and your sanity at some point. It's just not the right way to live, and you know that. It wasn't even the right way to live then. It was just the best you could come up with. But that's okay. What matters is that you're still here. Your life is still worth living and enjoying, and you can still learn how. So take this wisdom and learn from my mistake. Don't drink the poison so that other people will like you. Live a life that you would look back on and be proud of, so that you like you. And then, other people liking you will come naturally because of your natural charisma. And other people not liking you won't just do nothing to you anymore. You might even find that people not liking you is kind of fun. Remember, the same skills you use to craft a perspective that kept you alive are the same skills you'll have to use to deconstruct and abandon that old perspective. Things like faith, humility, maybe even a little submissiveness at times, and possibly the most difficult of them all, trust. Trust in yourself and trust in others. All of these things are what got you into trouble. And once you move on, they're gonna be your favorite parts about living. I just wanna say one more thing, and you might have to relieve your intellect a little bit for this one. Listen, your birth and everything that makes you truly who you are, are not mistakes. You're here to be yourself. And part of being who you are is actually changing. So, love who you were, love who you are, then change it, and then love that. That is the true essence of confidence. I appreciate y'all for being here. Next episode, we're going to finish that fucking roof. I'll see you later.